I'm going to go through the process I use to create proxies using the templates that you can download from my website. This is the 8th edition Super Art template and I'm going to turn it into an Azusa Lost But Seeking. So you've probably noticed that Photoshop is complaining that I don't have the appropriate font and will no doubt do this for you. Not a problem. The way that you handle it is you go to my website and you download the appropriate font. Then when Photoshop complains, you just say, yeah, okay, whatever. And in the little font menu in the top left, you click on that and select the font that you need. Now I am going to type in legendary creature dash human monk, but the dash is not actually a dash. It's something called an M dash, E-M-D-A-S-H. And the way that you type that is you hold down option and push dash. Um, that's on a Mac. On Windows, it's probably different. Um, don't know how to do it on Windows. Now we're going to go and we're going to do the mana cost. The way that you do this is you use a special font um, that is just for magic symbols. Azusa's casting cost is going to be two colorless and one green. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to type in two colorless, which is not actually one character, it's two characters, and they kind of stack on top of each other. So the first character that you're going to type is the little circle character that you can see on the screen right there. And it's kind of a grayish color. What you do is you use the color swatch layer right there. You can see me selecting green. Uh, anyway, you select the one that says black for the colorless. Yeah, I know, black, colorless, whatever. They're different. Doesn't matter. Colorless circle is actually the black swatch on the color swatches. So you select... Uh, select that color on the color swatch and then to create the circle you just push the O key, the letter O on your keyboard that will create the circle then change your color back to real black push the number 2 on your keyboard and that's how you get the two colorless mana symbol. To get the green mana symbol similar process you select green on the color swatch push the O key then select actual black push the G key, which will get you the tree symbol, and that will complete the green color symbol. Um, anyway, complicated, but that's how you type casting cost. Um, I'm doing some other stuff here. I went ahead and I changed the frame from whatever default color it was to green. Um, I hid some layers. I hid the artist credit layer. I hid the um, set icon layer, I hit the watermark, and now I'm going to go in, type in the rules text. Um, kind of assuming a lot of you guys know how layers work, have a general idea of how Photoshop works. If you don't, go ahead and Google it. Uh, like the stuff that I'm skipping over is really not too complicated. Uh, how to move things, how to resize things, how to hide layers, that sort of stuff. Not, not too tricky. <clears throat> Okay, so right here I'm going to go and select sort of the top part of the green frame. That was a um, command X, that's a, a cut, cut and paste. So cut that, moved it down. Uh, it's, it's its own layer now. You can see layer one is a new layer from the green layer. The reason I'm doing this is I want to squish my text box down real small so I have a whole bunch of room for the artwork. I'm going in there and I'm erasing the rest of the green layer that I don't want. And now I'm going to try to move this card type text layer down, but by default it's locked on the template. So you're going to want to unlock it. Here I am struggling trying to figure out how to unlock it. That's not how you do it. Ultimately what you want to do, you'll see me do it in a second, is yeah, click on that thing right there. I don't know what it is. It's a little like four directional arrow thing. Click on that. That will unlock the layer, allow you to move it down. Sweet, looking good. Next, I'm going to go ahead and select the artwork that I want. Um, 
This is a little folder that I have. Anytime I'm online, I see some cool artwork, I just sort of save it, put it in this folder. Um, so if I ever want to make like a proxy of something, I have a, a cool selection of art. Most of this is just from a Google image search for Legend of the Cryptids, which is an online trading card game. And they have some pretty cool high resolution artwork. And yeah, I used a bunch of it. Um, when I'm selecting art for a proxy, I like the, I guess, color scheme of the art to match the frame of the card. So Azusa is a green card, so she has a green frame. And I'd like to choose some artwork that has mostly green in it. And I went ahead, I chose this one. A uh, quick tip for you. If you are trying to resize an image and you want to maintain the uh, proportions, you just hold down shift and drag, which is pretty much what I did there. Um, now I'm just moving that layer down into the illustrations folder so that it's underneath the frame. Quick little cleanup right there. I missed a spot when I was erasing earlier. And now what I'm going to do is if you look at the bottom left corner of the card, you can still see a little bit of the text where it said Legend of the Cryptids. And I'm going to want to get rid of that. So the way that I do it is with the stamp tool, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you've seen this before. Uh, if you haven't, basically the way that it works is, first of all, there it is, the little stamp icon. Um, you uh, option click on anything that you want in the image and it's going to make like basically a, a copy of that image and then you just regular click somewhere else on the image and it will copy what you clicked on earlier and paste it over what you're clicking on now and it's pretty cool it's got like mm, some opacity on the edge of it so it looks like it's blending together anyway as you can see it does a pretty sweet job of getting rid of that text and one more thing that I like to do is I like to have the artwork sort of popping out of frames um, you'll see what I mean in a second but like uh, her head I'm gonna want to kinda like overlap with the frame and I'll show you how I do that. It's pretty easy. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make kind of a general selection. Uh, this part doesn't have to be too neat because we're going to go over later and sort of tidy it up. But um, I'm just using the lasso tool here to get sort of a, a feel for, for the part that I want to kind of stick out over the frame. And I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to go and copy and paste it. Uh, make sure you don't cut. Actually, I suppose it wouldn't matter, because I'm just going to paste it in the exact same place, but on top of the frame layer, if that makes sense. So you'll see in a second. So I, I'm pretty sure I just control c it and control v it, and then dragged it up over the frame layer. So this is what you get. Now what I want to do is I kind of want to um, clean up the edges. You can see how it looks pretty choppy. And the way that I'm going to do that is with a layer mask. And you can see the layer mask right there on layer 2. It's that little rectangle to the right of it. And the way that I created it, you probably missed it, is I clicked on, there's a little icon at the very bottom right, there's a whole bunch of icons in a row. It's the one, one, two, three, four, five from the right. Looks like a little uh, white rectangle with a black circle in it. I clicked on that, created the layer mask, and now anything that I draw on this layer mask that's black or gray will make the layer that mask is attached to transparent. And the amount of transparency will be equal to how dark the gray or black is. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing on this layer mask using 
a soft paintbrush with a kind of a medium opacity. And that's painting sort of a gray onto the layer mask, which is creating a sort of a, a medium sort of opacity. And it makes it look like this layer is blending into the layer below it. There you go. Cool trick. Almost done. All that we have to do now is add the power toughness box and power toughness icons. Pretty simple. Just find that folder, unhide it, and type those in. Um, anyway, I hope you guys were able to learn something from this. As always, if you're interested in more information on how to print these things, um, how to do alters, or just anything else related to proxies, please check out my website, Reeves Magic Card Art, and I'll put the link below. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.